Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with apple fritters. That's right, I'm not going to lie, I've never been a huge fan of apple fritters. I mean, I just didn't understand going to a donut shop and then not getting a donut. But eventually I came to realize it had nothing to do with its lack of hold. I just wasn't crazy about those chunks of what were basically undercooked apple. So for our first official fall recipe of the season, I'm going to show you my sort of reworked version of this, featuring two significant changes. The first is we're actually going to cook the apple a little bit beforehand. And second, well I can't tell you, it's a huge surprise. But you'll see that soon enough. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started with the star of the show, our apples. And for this recipe, I'm going to suggest the Granny Smith, which is my personal favorite cooking apple. And what it lacks in that traditional red apple color, it more than makes up for with ideal taste and texture. And to prep these, what we're going to do is peel them, quarter them, and then core them. And I'm going to be using the busy prep cook style to peel these, which is to peel around the top and then peel down the sides like this. Since this is probably the fastest and most efficient method, but if you're doing these with friends or family, you'll want to do the thing where you peel around the apple, seeing who can get the longest continual peel without breaking, which is a lot of fun, but does take longer. But anyway, one way or another, we're going to peel that apple before cutting it in quarters. And then we'll take our knife and trim out the core. And then once our apple's been trimmed and quartered, what we'll do is cut each of those pieces into two or three pieces. And then we'll simply turn that and slice it about every quarter inch or so. And of course, you're going to try to be a little bit consistent. But don't forget, these things are going to be stuck inside a fritter. So no one's going to see if you're a little off. So try to relax. And then what we'll do once our apples are sliced up is transfer those into a bowl and reserve those while we melt some butter. Because as I mentioned, one major change here to the traditional apple fritter recipe is that we're going to cook these a little bit before they go in the batter. So we're going to melt some butter over medium-high heat, but we're just not going to melt it. We're actually going to toast it as sort of nutty brown. And please be careful, butter can go from golden brown to golden black very quickly. And as soon as we have something that sort of looks like this, we'll go ahead and dump in our fruit. And what we want to do is cook these apples for, I don't know, three or four minutes, stirring occasionally on medium-high heat until they kind of soften up a little bit. All right, we certainly don't want to cook them all the way through, but we do want to take that raw edge off. And by the way, we are going to throw in a tablespoon of sugar, but I don't like to do that right at the beginning. I like to give these a couple minutes first. So we'll give those a little saute until they just start to soften up around the edges. And at that point, we'll go ahead and sprinkle in some sugar and continue on for another couple minutes until we end up with something that's starting to get a little bit golden brown and starting to soften up, but they're still going to retain their shape and stay relatively firm. And please keep in mind that traditionally raw apples are used in here. So we'll probably want to err on not cooked enough versus overcooked. So for me, that is looking good right there. And then what we'll do at that point is pull them off the heat and toss them in a strainer just in case we have any excess liquid, which if you're using the Granny Smith, you probably won't. All right, other apple varieties could produce more moisture. And if you do have any extra, it will drip down. And then what we'll do is let this cool down to room temp before we add it to our batter. And of course, putting the components together for that batter is the next step. So first up, let's go ahead and mix up our dry ingredients which will include, to no one's surprise, some all-purpose white flour, as well as some baking powder. And please make sure the one you're using you bought this decade. We'll also want to toss in some salt, and then some traditional apple fritter spices, including some cinnamon, some ground ginger, and some freshly grated nutmeg. I mean, come on, you're going to make apple fritters and use non-freshly grated nutmeg? That ain't right. So we'll grate in a little nutmeg, before taking a whisk and giving this a thorough mix. In the olden days, they used to sift the ingredients, but today we just use a whisk, which some folks actually refer to as millennial sifting. Because while it doesn't work quite as well, it is easier and faster, so nobody cares. So we'll take a whisk and mix that for about a minute to combine those ingredients. And once that's been accomplished, we'll set that aside and move on to the wet ingredients. So in a bowl, we'll go ahead and crack one large egg, to which we'll add some white sugar, and then we'll take a whisk and give that a mix for about a minute. And please, at this point, do not forget the melted butter, which I did. So I stopped and added it in and continued mixing. Okay, so don't forget that tip I've given you in the past. Whenever you're stirring or mixing something, always try to remember what you forgot. But anyway, we're going to mix up our egg, our sugar, and our melted butter. And once that's set, we can move on to final assembly. So assuming our apples have cooled down to room temp, or at least very close to it. We'll go ahead and add those to our wet ingredients, which brings us to the second significant change to the traditional technique. We're gonna add some sparkling apple cider. Oh yeah, and I'm using a gold medal variety. 
If you can't find that, you can substitute with silver or bronze metal. And why I'm using this instead of the traditional milk or regular apple cider is because hopefully that carbonation adds a little bit of lightness to the batter. And even if it doesn't, it seems like it's going to. Plus, we get to drink the rest of the bottle. So we'll go ahead and pour in some sparkling apple cider. And then last but not least, we will dump in our dry ingredients. And then we'll take a spoon and mix until it's just combined. So as usual, we're not going to obsess about overmixing. We're just going to simply stir until we don't see any more flour. And as with all batters, if it looks a little wet, add a little more flour. And maybe if it looks a little too dry, add another splash of cider. And actually, as I'm looking at this, it probably could have used another tablespoon of flour. But I really don't enjoy a dense dry fritter, so I will tend to always err on the side of slightly too moist. But anyway, once our batter is mixed, we'll set that aside while we heat up a couple inches of oil over medium-high heat to approximately 350 degrees. And once that's up to temp, we will fry a couple tablespoons at a time, using two spoons to safely transfer it in. Oh, and by the way, those irregular edges are one of the signature features of the apple fritter. I mean, these are supposed to look homemade, not like something that came from a store. So we'll transfer that batter in with complete disregard for any kind of uniform shape. And what we'll want to do is we place this in is sort of flatten it out just a little bit. That's going to help it cook a little quicker and a little more evenly. And we're going to fry these for about two minutes per side. And one thing I like to look for, sort of like when you're making pancakes, is you'll see bubbles kind of forming on the top of the batter. That is generally a decent indication to ready to flip over. But like I said, it's going to be about two minutes per side. So I went ahead and carefully flipped those over. And once those have been successfully flipped, we'll give the other side a couple minutes. At which point our fritter should be fried. And you'll know because you're going to test one. If it's still wet and doughy inside, go longer. And if it's dry and burnt, you went too far. But happily, these were perfect. So we'll fish those out with a strainer and let them drain on some paper towels. And yes, those do look amazing. But wait, there's more. We're going to go ahead and ice these with a simple apple cider glaze. So while our fritters are draining and cooling down a little bit, we'll go ahead and take some powdered sugar and add a little pinch of cinnamon. And then all we need to do is stir in enough of our sparkling apple cider until we have something just runny enough to drizzle over our fritters. And there's two ways you can do this. You can sift the sugar first and mix this up in about five seconds, or the method I prefer, don't sift it and stir for like 10 minutes. But either way, we're gonna stir that until it's smooth and we've achieved a viscosity similar to what you see here. And that's it. Our last official act will be to place these on some kind of platter and drizzle over our glaze, which some people will just dip in. But why the heck would anyone dip when they could drizzle? So I'm gonna go ahead and spoon that over slowly and provocatively until approximately 50% of the surface area is covered. And that's it, our updated, reimagined, new and improved apple fritters are done. And who knows, maybe you enjoy the apple fritters with the raw apple chunks. But like I said, I don't. I love that when we bite into these, the apple, while still having some texture, is kind of tender and definitely sweeter. So I really do personally prefer this style. And also sometimes when you use the raw apple, is their cooking juice will leak out and make the inside of the fritter soggy which is generally not considered a good thing. And of course, it goes without saying, if you're going to make these for some kind of party or Halloween get-together, if you want to dress up the tops a little with some crushed nuts, or maybe some toasted pumpkin seeds, something like that, go ahead. It's up to you. You guys are the babysitters of these apple fritters. Which reminds me, after this video, you can watch one more, but then it's time for bed. Okay? But anyway, that's it. Apple fritters. Tis the season to use apples in desserts as well as hang out with friends and family in a warm kitchen. And this project is a fantastic way to do both of those things. So I really do hope you give these a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.